biomass is the fastest growing industry in the country today in terms of renewable energy. The industry accelerated with the passage of the Renewable Energy Act of 2008 or RA 9513. Renewable energy is an essential part of the country's low emissions development strategy and is vital to addressing the challenges of climate change, energy security, and access to energy in the Philippines. Biomass refers to biological material that can be used as fuel or energy and is abundantly found in the country. These are agricultural residues and woody debris from the forest, converted into solid, liquid, or gaseous fuel to provide energy for industrial, commercial, or domestic use. It plays a vital role in the country's energy supply, almost 30% of the energy for the 110 million Filipinos comes from biomass. It accounts for approximately 15% of the primary energy use in the country and has a potential capacity of generating 200 megawatts, according to a World Bank study. Because of the rich potential in biomass energy, foreign investors signified interest in the development of biomass power plants and plantations in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. One of the biggest producers of biomass energy is Moser Environmental Corporation, or MEC. The Negros-based company is a DNR recipient of an integrated forest management agreement and socialized industrial forest management agreement with the right to sustainably manage, develop, and utilize large tract of forest land. The MEC is a wood-based corporation engaged in the trading of wood products, including wood chips as biomass fuel. Moser Environment Corporation uh, started late 1990s with Charles W. Moser. He wanted to do environmental uh, works, you know, in, especially in the Philippines. So that's where the Moser Environment Corporation started in 1998, where we're targeting to uh, rehabilitate or reforest the island of Negros. The company has 2,500 hectares of acacia mangium plantation in Himamailan and 5,815 hectares in the municipalities of Isabela and Binalbagan. It is considered to be the major producer of wood chips for biofuel in the Philippines. MEC produces round logs, pallets, wood panels and wood chip. Harvested acacia mangium are brought to its processing plant in Himamailan, where these are dried, cut to size, and turn to chips. These are then transported to the sugarcane processing plant of United Robina Corporation's Sugar and Renewables in Sonedco, Kabangalan. So most of the cost, you know, <coughs> of operation is done through volume, you know, uh, by metric ton. Then from the chipping machine, it passes to a conveyor system, uh, in-feed conveyor, <coughs> and passing through a chipper, then goes out to uh, an out. Uh, outfit conveyor, then uh, directly to the truck, you know, for the local market. We are uh, 14,000 tons cane per day, sugar mill, which uh, produces raw sugar, refined sugar, and we exported excess power to the grid. Our main source of uh, fuel is bagasse, which came from the byproduct of sugar cane. So basically, um, Operation of the sugar mill is uh, around seven to eight months. So in order to extend our power plant operation for another two to three months, we need an alternative fuel. So the best fuel that we have so far is the wood chips. So last year alone, we consumed around 6,200 tons of wood chips. So that is, uh, we mix it with the bagasse at around five to 10% maximum. So with more volume of wood chips, we could actually extend power export to the grid by almost, uh, say, two to three months of power plant operations. Demand for wood chips is high, especially for sugar mills and distillers. MEC is exerting efforts to meet the rising demand for wood chips in the country. With a current interest in biomass energy, the DNR is opening other areas to encourage more investments in the country. 
These investment areas will be highlighted during the Forestry Investment Forum that will be led by the Forestry Management Bureau. We have database when it comes to availability of areas open for investment and we usually present these areas in uh, many fora or invitations from stakeholders and of course potential investors, especially for industrial forest management agreement. Second, for Negros Occidental, uh, we organize the different partners when it comes to forestry production. We have organized a lumber dealers association and of course permittees association to really impart and of course inform these stakeholders when it comes to current policies and legislations that uh, the government is implementing. As far as the mayor's office is concerned, we try to make the investor's life here as easy as possible. Sometimes I even reach a point that uh, I, I handle the documentation personally. You know, help out with uh, rentals, help out with um, uh, when they would want to discuss uh, certain matters to the community, you know, assist the community, sometimes um, even up to securing uh, various organizations, associations that may be a possible market to the various investors that will come in. You know. Try Himamailan City. This is the only city we're in. Uh, we have a seaport, the shortest route to the oriental side. We have, we have an airport adjacent to Himamailan. We are an area we're in. We are both agricultural and then aqua in nature. And then uh, we can exhaust so much no? um, when it comes to investments no? that might come in. No? To the investors and uh, potential partners of the DNR, Welcome to Negros Occidental. We are happy to serve you, sustaining our responsibilities for the province of Negros Occidental for a clean and green environment for the future generations. FMB is currently reviewing its policies, support mechanisms and friendly investment climate for all prospective investors. Changes in forestry investment policies coupled with the new directions the government is taking biomass to the next level as energy of the future. Everybody will be dancing and we're feeling it right. Everybody will be dancing and be feeling it right. 